Okay, as always, one mil equals one thousandth of an inch. I uh, discovered something pretty interesting recently, and um, I've got it set up here to show you. Uh, about a year ago, uh, I was at a uh, get together with other mechanics and someone else in the industry and I asked the question of the person who was doing the presentation how he measures the diameter of reels and his response to the question was I've never felt the need to measure the diameter of a reel this is somebody who's been in this industry for a long time and I could not disagree more. I think that every technician needs to master this skill. Um, there's another quote that I came across recently from this book, Foundations of Mechanical Accuracy. And the quote is, Basic to man's behavior is his ability to determine, modify, and adapt to his environment. And when I saw that, what immediately came to mind was this word here, determine. And what, what came to my mind was the word measure. Basic to man's behavior is his ability to measure, modify, and adapt to his environment. Okay, so the story with this reel. This is one reel off of a triplex Greensmoor. Um, the other two reels on that triplex. Uh, when I started grinding this greens mower a year and a half ago when I got here, I would do like I always do. I measure the diameter of each end of the reels before and after I grind. And with the other two reels, I was getting good, consistent results, as usual. And I also record, usually record, all of the measurements that I take, uh, usually before and after I grind. Um, I write it uh, with a Sharpie on top of the unit itself. and. One of the other two units, which I was having good results with throughout the first few months, here's some of the measurements that I was getting. The first measurement that I took on one end was 4.649, on the other end was 4.651 for a difference of 2 mil, and that was those measurements were taken with a pie tape right here about halfway in between these two spiders and then same thing on this end halfway in between the last two spiders and then the next time I measured I got 4.640 4.639 for a difference of one mil <clears throat> then um, there was a little bit of a gap but the uh, the measurements that I wrote down were not legible. And uh, then there was a, a measurement of 4.611, 4.610 for a difference of one, and so on. So before and after I ground the reel, I was getting a difference in diameter from here to here of either two or one. And that's typical. This reel right here. <laughs> I 
these are the measurements that I was getting before and after grinding. 4.884, 4.893, 4.8, 4.893 for a difference of nine. <clears throat> and that was here to here. Now if you project that out to the end of the reel, if I'm getting a difference of nine from here to here, then it's probably gonna be a difference of about 11 or 12 from end to end. And the specific manufacturer's specifications Toro specifications or a maximum of 10 from end to end. So I was not even grinding this reel to specifications sometimes. And I was getting some erratic results. You can see the difference of 9, 3, 4, 11, 6, 4, 10, 5, 10. And the first few measurements, the, the bigger end was on this side. The other measurements, the bigger end was on this side. So I'm glad that I took those, recorded those measurements because it's, that's really unusual. And <clears throat> recently I decided to uh, put new bearings on this reel and so I took it out and put it here on the surface plate and started doing some measurements and I it was only then well, let me back up a little bit you'll see these measurements here are one of the other reels uh, we started out when I first got a hold of those other two reels, uh, here's a diameter of six point, uh, four point six four nine. It's uh, getting down there um, to the last uh, bit of its life, but this reel here was much bigger, four point eight eight four, than the other two. Okay, so that's my first clue. Uh, then when I got it out and started looking at it closer, and now that I have time to uh, pay attention to more detail, um, I noticed that this is not a Toro reel. It's an aftermarket reel. And then I began to suspect <clears throat> what caused this, okay? Um, so I've got this reel up here adjusted so that the top of the bearing journal on each end is the same distance from the surface plate. Okay, I've got my indicator. I'm going to touch off on the top of this bearing journal. And I've got plus one, okay? Let's move it around a little bit. I've still got plus one. I'm going to zero that. Again. Okay, I've got zero there. And I have minus one and a half here. <coughs> Now I've got zero. So my readings are pretty close, pretty consistent as I move this gauge around. Uh, looks 
like minus one. zero. Right. When I go down here to the point where I usually measure with the pie tape in between these two spiders. getting minus one and a half and it's just a coincidence that I'm getting close to zero because uh, this the diameter of this shaft is much bigger than the, the bearing journal down here so it's just a coincidence that I'm close to zero all right minus uh, one and a half so I'm gonna zero that do it again I get zero again Down here to the left side, and I get minus five. Okay, minus five. Plus one. Uh, plus one half. I'm going to go back to my bearing journal just to confirm that they are near zero. Plus one. Time. Well, actually, I, I zeroed this, so I need to. I, I should not get zero. I should get something pretty close to zero. So um, I've got plus one. I'm going to zero that out. And I've got minus one and a half. So my readings change a little bit as I angle this gauge. Which, and I've got zero there. Okay, so what this has shown is that this shaft inside of the reel is not true. I'm going to turn it 180. Now, we go back to our zero point or our original point that we indicated here because I need to re-zero the gauge on the the black part of the shaft. Okay, I've got minus two. I'm going to zero that. And I'm going to zero again. Duplicate what we did a couple minutes ago. Five. 
that's what we got a couple minutes ago on the shaft inside of the reel which obviously is not true uh, there's five mil run out at those points I'm gonna rotate it about 180 and I get plus one there but I just got minus five on the other side so there's about six mil run out right there or the paint thickness is causing that difference. Okay, I just got um, a plus one there on that end. I'm, I'm getting minus one and a half there, which is not much difference. But minus two, minus three, minus two, go back uh, 180. I'm getting plus one there. Minus five there. So now when I was grinding these, I was using a Foley grinder and I was aligning this shaft using indicating off of. I was aligning the reel, indicating off of the shaft, which I've just shown is not true. That explains why I was getting these erratic diameters and uh, differences in diameter from one end to the other because the shaft is not true or there's a paint thickness issue here. Now the other two reels where I did get consistent readings and good results, a maximum of two, no difference. Uh, those were Tor OEM Toro reels. Um, so there is a need obviously for a technician to be able to measure the diameter of a reel this is one example of why it's important um, in another video I will explain how to measure the diameter of a reel using the surface plate instead of using a pie tape.